Okay, in this lesson, we're going to introduce a brand new type of function, and that is rational functions. So we're going to start by just building an example from a sort of simple context. So we're going to imagine me riding a bike as I do. And we're going to assume I'm riding at 20 miles per hour for 40 miles. And the formula distance equals rate times time is a formula you're probably familiar with. Um, so T would be the time it takes me to finish this trip. Um, this is a very easy problem that you could do on your own. We'd be like, okay, my distance is 40 miles. My rate is 20 miles per hour. And then T is my variable I'm trying to solve. And then T would be two hours. Okay. A rational function is going to allow us to model a slightly more complicated situation. So let's, let's kind of build this rational function to model this situation for my next example here. So now X in this example is going to be the speed of a headwind. Um, so you guys are familiar with wind we do in the Windy City. Um, a headwind means you're like riding into the wind. So this is like actual footage of me riding my bike into the wind here. Um, so obviously like riding into the wind makes it harder. It slows you down, right? So instead of my rate, my previous problem, my rate was just 20 miles per hour flat. Here, my rate is going to be 20 minus the headwind because the headwind's going to slow me down right um so my formula then becomes distance equals rate times time but my rate is 20 minus x my distance is 40. so here we have a function relating t and x and let's go ahead and solve for t so i'm going to divide both sides by this 20 minus x terms and here now is my rational function. So notice as x gets bigger, t gets bigger in this case, right? So if I plugged in 2 here, I'd be going 18 miles per hour on the bottom, and 40 divided by 18 would be a little bit bigger than 2. Um, so notice this, this model is more complicated than our simple model up here, and it gave us a rational function. So the word rational comes from the word ratio, which means a fraction. So the reason it's called a rational function is it's a function made of a fraction. Let's say made of fractions. And in this case, our numerator and a denominator are both polynomial functions. Right, so 40 and 20 minus x are both polynomials. They're very easy polynomials. They don't have any x squareds or higher powers of x in them. They're polynomials nonetheless. Um, so there's a reason we're studying these after polynomial function because they're built of polynomials. So now the reason we're studying these functions at all is because they allow us to just kind of model more complicated situations right so we're gonna look at the graph of this guy see what it looks like um the way we're gonna do that is i just typed it into my calculator and i adjusted the window a little bit i zoomed out twice just so i could see more of the graph you know 40 miles per hour is a pretty big wind but that's a reasonable wind to be interested in looking at so now i'm gonna go ahead and look at the graph and notice what i get is this sort of curve and this other curve and clearly two separate pieces and I'm going to draw a sketch of that here. So this piece goes up forever and left forever. And then the other piece is kind of the mirror of that, right? And Y is my wind. No, sorry. My, y is my time in this case. And X is my wind speed. And we have this break in it. I'm going to draw a little dotted line to kind of represent that there's a break in my graph. And we call that, remember from our work on limits, a discontinuity. So this graph has a discontinuity in it. And if we use our graphing calculator intelligently, we can figure out whether that is just to lay what. So we're looking at the table now. I did second table. And as I scroll down, what I see is I get an error at x equals 20. Um, so that kind of makes sense because look at what happens to our denominator when x equals 20. That should be a little bit familiar from our work on domain. And I'm just going to label that that's my discontinuity here. What I'm asked for in this question is the y-intercept. So we're going to find my y-intercept. And my y-intercept is where x is equal to 0, right? So I can just plug in 0 here. So I'd have t equals 40 over 20 minus 0. And this ends up being 40 over 20, which is our 2 hours. And then we would expect to get that from our work up above, right? Um, what this means is that when the headwind is 0 miles per hour, it takes me two hours to travel 40 miles. 
Um, so that makes sense that, that it would match our original result above and where we weren't thinking about headwinds at all. And then notice as the wind gets bigger, the time gets bigger. And then when we get to x equals 20, my graph starts to not make any more sense, right? Because, um, well, if you're trying to ride 20 miles per hour into a 20 mile per hour wind, you're not actually getting anywhere at that point, right? This break in the graph that we get because of that is called an asymptote. We're going to study that in more depth in the next lesson. For now, we're just going to worry about our y-intercepts and also our x-intercepts as we tackle this more challenging example here. Notice here we have a, a real rational function with real polynomials in the top and bottom. Um, so our work's going to be a little bit harder. We're going to start with the y-intercept because we just did that. Um, y-intercept in this case in our function notation, we're doing f of zero, so we're setting x equal to zero, and we can just then plug in zero, and I get on the bottom zero squared plus 19 times zero plus 90, and everything sort of cancels out. I get negative 81 over 90, which we can then simplify if we want, uh, becomes 9 over 10, right? Negative 9 over 10. So that's my y-intercept, so I could be like f of zero is negative 9 over 10, or in my point notation, that would be the point 0, 9 tenths, negative 9 tenths. Okay. So there's my y-intercept, and I got that, of course, by setting x equals 0. Now my x-intercept, so for my x-intercept here, I want now f of x to be equal to 0. Um, so that means... I'm going to make my y value 0. And you already know this. We're just doing it with a, our new type of function. So we used to solve these just by factoring for quadratics and polynomials, right? Now, obviously, we have a little bit more challenging of a function. So these are fractions. So we need to think, how do we make our fraction 0? So I'm going to just jot down some examples here. You don't need to necessarily write this in your notes. But if I have 0 over 9... That's 0, right? 0 over 9 is 0. But 9 over 0 is undefined. Right? So this is 0 on the left, undefined on the right. So notice we need this and not this, right? We need our numerator to be equal to 0. Here's the catch, though. Before we do that, we need to factor first, right? So on the top, it's a difference of squares. Hopefully, we're getting really familiar with that by now. And then on the bottom... We want two numbers that multiply to 90, add up to 19, and those are 9 and 10, right? And notice we would have gotten this wrong if we had not done this, because this cancels out. So this particular rational function has only one x-intercept, and that's where x minus 9 is equal to 0. Um, so that's x equals 9. And in my function notation, I say f of 9 is equal to 0, or it's the point 9 comma 0 is my x-intercept. So the trick with rational functions is occasionally they are undefined for certain features. So this canceled out. That means my negative 9 that I would get from this factor is not an x-intercept, not a 0. So for my y-intercept, I just plug in 0. Those can be undefined, by the way. That's allowed. For my x-intercept, what I do right is I simplify first, and then I set my numerator equal to 0. And that is for my x-intercepts. Okay, so these are two great examples um, as you tackle your delta math, so keep these notes out handy.